How you doing, guys? Joe McCall here with Gavin Timms. And um, we are, if you don't know who we are, just real quick, mercifully brief. I have the podcast called the Real Estate Investing Mastery Podcast. Been investing full-time in real estates since 2009. Quit my job. I was working as a civil engineer and I was making good money and working on big power plants. And I quit my job in 2009, one year into the recession, doing lease options. Flipping lease options. And I was making more money doing that part-time than I was in my full-time job. So that's when I said, see you guys, I'm out of here. And it was pretty crazy. I've not looked back since. I started my podcast called the Real Estate Investing Mastery Podcast in 2011. It's one of the longest running real estate investing podcasts. That's how most people know me. And um, I release episodes three times a week. Either I'm teaching something or Gavin's teaching something sometimes or we're interviewing somebody. And it's a really good podcast. Go check it out. Go to any of your podcast players or Apple Podcasts and subscribe to the show. I release three episodes a week on there. I also have awesome. a course called Simple Lease Options, and I teach people how to flip lease options. That's what I really love right now. Man. My business is mainly publishing, uh, sell software, marketing services, teach people how to do deals. We're still doing deals ourselves. And we also coach and just sell software and marketing services and all of that good stuff, right? Love working from home. The coffee's better. Bathrooms are cleaner. The commute is much shorter. You know, <laughs> in fact, you know, working from home has its own interesting things too. Like we back to a giant, really big state park. I'm in St. Louis, Missouri, and my wife and I we decided we got to get out of here. I mean, it's it's not essential, but it's essential for me and my wife to get out of the house at least once a week. <laughs> and uh, go get some coffee. So we went to go to Starbucks to get some coffee, but the line was way too long. So we turned around. And we went to went, we we're going to get some get some hamburgers for our kids at Wendy's. And my son texts us and says, uh, "Dad, the park rangers are here. Like the police for the state parks, the Missouri Department of Natural Resources Police Department. <laughs> They've so we back to woods, like four or five thousand acres or something." They actually came walking up through the woods, through our backyard. So our kids are playing basketball and they see these people walking through the woods up into our yard and they were uniformed and had guns and stuff. So my two girls ran into the house and they texted me, uh, somebody's here. So we start freaking out and we start driving home. And then uh, by the time we're halfway back home, they had already left. They gave my kids some business cards and they told them, they said, nobody's in trouble. But I don't know. So I still don't know why they came. <laughs> and um, I got their business card here. I called them and left a voicemail. I was like, what's going on? So we'll see. Crazy. Yeah. Mer Gavin, give us a quick brief introduction of you. Yeah. So I'm originally from England. Uh, came over to the States probably eight, nine years ago. Got into real estate end of 2013, early 14, when I first came across it. Do everything virtual, always that from day one. Um, do virtual wholesaling, a lot of it in multiple markets, have done from, from day one. So I'm not your guy that pounds the ground, goes and see houses, never had been. Uh, very big into you know talking to sellers, making offers and follow-up. They are the, the principles of the business. Marketing, I should say, talking to sellers, making offers and follow-up on a virtual level. So making sure that, again, the people that we teach, I also do exactly you know, what we teach and, and set things up in the, in the same way. So I've been doing deals virtually. We have a ton in closing right now. And then again, with, along with Joe, do some content coaching. You know, as he said, you should subscribe to the podcast. We both have now. Joe's had a long-running YouTube channel for many years i have a new youtube channel so make sure you go and subscribe to both of them we're giving tons of value out how do they well, find your youtube channel just my name gavin timms and i should come up we do a lot of role plays with clients coaching calls I, i'm very big on you know i use i use my you my youtube for content and with clients really and just you know role plays and and, and things kind of showing what we do and obviously, Joe does a lot of podcasts and, and pushing things like we're doing right now to his channel. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. And um, yeah, I'm glad to be here with you all. So, appreciate you getting on. Nice. Troy nailed it. He said they were probably most likely checking for pot patches. 
<laughs> people growing pot and weed in the state park. You're probably right. It's probably what they were looking for. <laughs> I wonder though, like if you could just fly a drone over the whole park and look, you know, and see if you can find, um, but it is, we're like one week into, or actually we're only a couple days into turkey season for bow crossbows. You can shoot turkey with crossbows. So they may be looking for people setting up, like it's illegal to set up food or bait during hunting season for any kind of wildlife. So they may be looking for that. We do have a blind right in our backyard because my son's going turkey hunting tomorrow morning and we have some friends that have come over here so we're probably looking for pot patches i didn't know that that's what they were called but all right so the purpose of this call is uh to ask us anything we're going to answer your questions but we also want to we want you guys um oh hot seats we're gonna do hot seats so if somebody has something where they like, hey, I, I want to talk to you guys, we're going to ask you to raise your hand. If you raise your hand, we will bring you on, get you on video and talk to you and answer any questions you may have. You may want to do a role play. You may want to uh, just ask us some questions. You know, Maybe we'll, in a role play, we'll pretend to be the investor. You pretend to be the seller and we'll show you how to make, how to do these conversations. I wanted to talk about something first here that I think is really important. And this is going to become more and more important as we progress in this market. My opinion of where the market's heading um, is we're going to see, it's going to be a longer rebound. I don't think it's going to be a V rebound like some of the more optimistic economists would like us to believe. I think it's going to be a U or a long V, you know? (laughs) And um, we will come back, recover from this. But every, you know, this is always interesting to me. I've heard somebody say this before a couple of times. The Chinese root word for crisis is there's two words for that combine mean mean crisis in the Chinese language: danger and opportunity. And so things are kind of scary right now. People are freaking out, but there's also a lot of opportunity. And I was talking to somebody, trying to remember back to the day, because I was been studying doing real estate since 2006. And actually, I had my first rental property in 2001. But 2006 is when I really started taking it seriously and trying to study and started to buy some houses and stuff. And um, I remember watching as the market was going up, screaming hot, and then falling off of the precipice. And I remember watching the, the people that were successfully doing deals in 2009, 2010, and 2011. And what was it like? If you, I don't know if you all remember, but a lot of people were freaking out back then. This is nothing new. People were freaking out back in 08, 09. People were freaking out back in 2001 at 9 11. People were freaking out at the dot com bust in 1999. People were freaking out. In the early 90s, from the recession that we had in 91, 92, that time frame, people were freaking out in the uh, the 80s. We had high inflation, or 70s, we had inflation. So nothing's new here, all right? But what was interesting is I was talking to some friends about this that have been in the business a long time. They saw, I remember watching the wholesalers that were doing really well, that were doing a really well selling traditional deals like a wholesaler would. Were all, the, a lot of them were offering financing with their deals, all right? They were offering financing with their deals. What's going on right now? A lot of the hard money lenders are pulling other money out of the market. A lot of the private money lenders are pulling out of the market. They're scared what's going on. And they're, a lot of the institutional lenders and the banks, they're not lending much anymore. They're making it harder at least, right? Because they're scared. They don't know what's going to happen. Or what's, and if, I just saw on the news yesterday that Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, They've just announced that they're actually going to start, they're going to buy loans from the banks that are in forbearance. So I don't know how many, but you know, there's a lot of people that can't make their mortgage payments. And we're going to see May 1. I think people are going to be in for a big, big surprise. How many tenants are not paying the rent? How many mortgage homeowners are not paying their mortgage come May 1st? It's yep. going to be really, really bad. And that's my opinion. Hopefully I'm wrong. So 
<clears throat> there's going to be there's going to be a lot of fear going on in the market. Nobody's going to be there's going to be scared, you know, but I know beyond a shadow of a doubt what always does real well is when you can sell deals with creative terms on seller financing, lease options, you know, land contracts, whatever. When you can sell deals with financing already in place, you'll sell those things like that and you'll make still you'll still make high profit margins, all right? So what do I mean by that? A couple things. Number 1, as you're starting marketing and talking to sellers and making offers, be, oh, by the way, Tara is asking, I'm a private money broker with Lee Arnold. Yes. Yeah, so last week I promoted this thing called Capital Syndicate. And this is why it's so important that you pay attention to this. And if you want to check this out, it might still be open. Go to joelikescapital.com, joelikescapital.com. Can you do me a favor and type that in the Zoom chat? And if somebody you watching of this on Facebook and, and YouTube right now, please type this link in the comments because this is more. really important. This is going to help you help it make your deals easier to sell. JoeLikesCapital.com. I'm going to type it out myself just in case. Joe. Um, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to see if it's active as well. Capital.com. Joe likes Capital. C A P I T A L. You got to spell Capital right. Okay, so why well, this this is such a big deal. I want you guys to really understand this. If you're with a company like, you know, what Lee Arnold has with Capital Syndicate and I was promoting that last week. He's got a bunch of money and he's a private lender and he's willing to lend money on deals today and he's willing to pay you a broker fee for referring a private lender to him. So here's the point, if you want to stand above your competition, if you want to sell your properties for top dollar to other investors, and even to tenant buyers and owner occupants, you need to start thinking about having more. You need to start thinking about having uh, financing that you can offer to your buyers. Well, it says offer expired. Yeah, that's what I just got. All right. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I might open it back up later today or Wednesday. So keep that link and go back to it soon. All right. Anyway. So there's a couple of things I'm talking about here. Like number one, if you can get a property under owner financing, seller financing, or a lease option with an owner, you can package that deal together, put an owner occupant in it, put a tenant buyer in it, package that together and sell that as a package with the financing in place to another investor. That other investor doesn't have to go out and borrow more money, get a bank loan, use any of their own cash, you know, um, get hard money loan or all, any of that, right? So you can now, you're now selling financing in place to an end buyer. Now, there's this thing called the double dip strategy. And let me explain this real quick. Um, the double dip strategy is where you get a property under a sandwich lease option or owner financing with the owner. And you put a tenant buyer in place or an owner occupant in place. So you can create a wraparound mortgage or another lease option. You know, maybe you buy it with owner financing and put a lease option tenant buyer in it. So what you're going to do is you're going to get the, you're going to get a tenant buyer in there or an owner occupant retail buyer who's going to put down five to 10% on the property. So let's just say it's a $200,000 home. You're going to get 10 to maybe 10 to $20,000 down payment from that initial buyer. That money gets credited back to them. Okay. If, and when they buy the house. But then you can take that package deal that's, and it's got a cash flow, at least three or $400 a month. You know, at least 20% of the rent, 25% of the rent needs to cash flow, right? You can take that package and sell it to another investor. And then they'll pay you five, 10, $20,000 for the rights to take over that creative financing you structured in place. So you double dip then the money. You, you get the money from the buyer up front and you get the money from the investor that you sell it to. So an example, another example would be, you find a seller, they're motivated, they have two mortgage payments, they weren't able to sell their house like they wanted to, but they have, you can get, they can do a lease option, you can get $300 a month in cash flow on that lease option, right? You, got, you put the tenant buyer in there, the tenant buyer puts, let's be conservative, they put $5,000 down, you've just made five grand. And this property is cash flowing 300 a month, okay? And you got a tenant buyer, you're going to, you, you know, you're going to sell it to the tenant buyer for 150. You're buying it from the seller for a 130. So there's a $20,000 spread there, 
$300 a month cash flow. Well, if you were to sell that deal, and let me ask you, any of you guys right now, if you're interested in this, would you pay this? Would you pay 10 grand for this deal? That's I, If I could sell you this deal, it's a $150,000 house. You don't have to put any money in it. Tenant buyer's already there. They have a contract to buy the house in a couple of years. And you're cash flowing $300 a month. So you're going to be getting $3,600 a year on that deal. And I'm going to sell that deal to you for 10 grand. You're getting 36% on your money. 36% on your money. If you just cut that in half, you're making 18% on your money, right? So now I can get five grand from the tenant buyer and get another 10 grand from the investor. You just made $15,000 and you're in and out of a deal like that. That's the double dip strategy. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think it's going to be really powerful. Let me give you one more example of this. Let's say you're doing a regular wholesaling cash deal. Okay. And somebody's here saying this is good. I'd rather stay in the middle and make more money. Right. I would too. But there may be times when you would, it's better to make a quick nickel rather than a slow dime. I would rather sometimes make 15 grand now than 30 grand over two or three years. I mean, 15 grand is yeah. a lot of money, right? I mean, you can do one or two of those a month, 20, 30 grand a month just by double dipping or selling these packages to investors. Let me give you another example. And this is really important. If you're just a traditional wholesaler, you're just doing cash deals, pay attention to this, okay? As we start transitioning and as things start calming down a little bit, you need to start networking with your local banks. This works really well. You got to go talk to the local banks in your market that lend to investors and just ask them, if I were to bring you a buyer who was good, well qualified, would you lend on a investor deal? Would you lend on a rehab or whatever, a rental property? And a good local bank is going to say, yeah, sure. And then you just ask them, well, what are your requirements? And they'll tell you, well, you know, they need to have 20% down. They need to have six months of reserves. They need to have a 750 credit score or higher. They need to have, you know, we won't lend under 50 grand. We won't lend more than 200 grand or whatever. They're going to give you their criteria. All right. And you say, okay, great. If I bring you a buyer with a good deal that meets all this criteria, you will lend them money for this deal? Yeah, no problem. All right. Then what you do is you start marketing for buyers and you say, listen, I got a house here financing in place. I have a lender ready to lend on this deal. All you have to do is have bam, 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 bam. And then you list the requirements. 750 credit score, you know, $50,000 in the bank. 20% 20% down, blah, blah, blah. If you can sell these d- package deals with financing in place, you're going to crush it in this market as, as, as it's going down, okay? My advice is, as we're coming into out of a seller's market into a buyer's market, you want to make the quick nickel rather than the slow dime. I'd rather see you guys make 5, 10, 15 grand on a quick flip than staying in the middle of the deal for two to three years, hoping to get 30, 40 grand when it sells. Because what if it keeps on getting worse and worse and prices fall? And in two years, the house is worth less than what you have it under contract for, okay? So I understand staying in the middle is what Ron Legrand calls the golden goose. You get paid three times on the same house with none of your own money. That's right, Ter. You're absolutely right. And Ron Legrand is a master of that. I'm not knocking that. But still, you got to think about it. If you could, If you're in a position where you can make... 20 grand now on a $150,000 house, I'd probably say take that now. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so somebody asks, asks here, this is a good question. Why would someone go through you if they are in that good of a position? Because I'm bringing them the deal. Everybody, not everybody, but all the, these buyers and, and, and investors out there think that they're freaking out. All of the lenders that they were borrowing money from have said we're not lending anymore. You know, their their private lenders are scared. Their hard money lenders, the transaction, the institutional lenders are like, sorry, we don't lend anymore. We're we're pulling out of the market. They're freaking out. They're like, how am I going to buy deals? I don't have the money. But when you can present them a cash deal or like a, a deal with financing in place, and they only have to put 10 grand down to get the rights to that contract or to take your place. That's a screaming hot deal. They get three hundred dollars a month cash flow for only 10 grand. Because you've sold them a package deal. So anyway, I'm repeating myself. Yeah, so there's a lot of opportunity 
with what I'm saying here. And I hope you guys are paying attention. Does that make sense, Gavin? Yeah, no, that's good. Uh, and I, you know, I agree. I think you have to. Sorry, I've got text going off. I, I think you've got to just learn to adapt. You know, as we, as I, I look at personally at the market, and and again, I wasn't in the crash, right? So that's the first thing anyone says that was hurt in the crash. Well, you don't know. You you've not been through it. Um, but I think the, what we do is that we're in sales and marketing, right? We're not invest. We are investors, but when you look at it, we're in sales and marketing. Okay, the investors are the flippers, the buy and holds. That's what I would say as an investor that we're going after. And right now, the way that I analyze the market is that I only concentrate on what I can control today. So, in terms of you know, if I feel that I can wholesale deals and move them today, uh, then that's what I'm going to do. But again, don't be. I'm not deluded knowing, again, as you said, as that market is going to turn, because I think it will, in, in my opinion, you need to have more tools and you need to set up and say, okay, this isn't going to last forever. So we're, we're doubling down right now on certain things, you know, in our real estate business where we can make as much money as we can right now. We know it's not going to last before we have to transition into creative finance, into more solely on lease options and on owner finance. And then we're prepared for that. But, and I think that's everyone else. I think the worst thing that you can do right now is get gun shy and wait for something to happen. It is the worst advice, in my opinion, that you can do. Now, I'm not talking about your, you buying and flipping a property right now. I'm talking about the strategies that we teach and do is because you're controlling property without owning it, whether it's a cash wholesale or a lease option or an owner finance, right? The much better ways to invest than, oh, I'm bringing in 300000 to do this flip or whatever it may be. But there are people looking, so sell to them people. And that's what we're, we're really trying to focus on. And, and now is the time. We are seeing more motivation. Joe's already said when May 1 hits, when June 1 hits, it's going to get worse. It can all open the end of the week. I don't care. The damage is done. And we're not just going to turn around. People aren't going to get paid for weeks, even if they go back to work. So they're still not going to be making them payments. So people are still going to be stressing out. There's a ton of seller motivation because we're seeing it. And there is funding problems. We just, I suppose, have a deal closed Friday with a guy whose lender wouldn't lend. And he's got lending from someone else, luckily. So that's good. But you have to have more. You cannot just have one strategy or one backup. Or you need a backup, should I say? You can't just have one lender. So, no, I think that's you know great advice that yeah. you gave them, Joe. So, I, if you're in Zoom, I just put a new link in there that takes you to the program I was talking about from Lee Arnold, where he's lending money. So, there are people out there still willing to lend, like Lee Arnold, and I promoted his thing last week. It's called the Capital Syndicate. I just put a link in the Zoom chat if you're watching us there. If you're watching us on YouTube or Facebook, go to Joe Likes Capital, but give me a day or so and, and that might come back up. But if you can now, you've got a, if you got somebody who's willing to lend money and you can present this with your deals, you can get paid twice. You can get paid on the assignment fee for selling that deal. And you can also get paid from somebody like Lee Arnold who's going to pay your referral fee. But you know, regardless, start thinking the guys that succeed, the ladies that succeed in this market are going to be ones that are more open to creative. They're not hunkering down and, and pretending, putting their, their head in the sand, hoping this all goes away because uh, it's going to take a while to recover. You now need to look where the opportunity is. And when you can make more than just a cash offer, you can make a lease option offer or an owner financing offer subject to, and you can make a creative type of a structure you now are going to be able to sell that deal much easier to an investor, the owner occupant, the tenant buyer, whoever's going to live in that house. You know, right? If somebody had a good question here. How do you find these buyers that you can sell these, these packages to? Well, it's actually really easy. Same place you'd find buyers before. My favorite, one of them, is going to Craigslist, Zillow for rent. Uh, go Section 8 and just calling landlords, calling people who are already advertising properties for rent, calling property management companies saying, hey, do you know anybody that's looking for more deals? I got something. Especially with creative deals, the next best place to find them is at your local real estate clubs. Now, right now, they're probably all closed. Next month, hopefully, they'll be back open again. 
But start networking with your local real estate associations, your clubs, print out a flyer saying, hey, rental property, 15% cash on cash return, owner financing available. That's all you need to say. And you'll get tons of people that will call you about that deal. Owner financing available. Or you could even say, um, if it's a lease option, you could say creative financing slash lease option available on this property. And then just give the numbers, you know, 20 grand in equity, $300 cash flow, tenant buyer already in place, you know, package these deals. And even if you don't have it under creative financing, if you're a realtor right now, you know, for heaven's sake, start networking with your local banks and find out which ones are still willing to lend to investors, find out what the criteria is and build, make a brochure. Like he, here we have all these houses that, you know, they can cash flow this. And then we have the banks already in place. And by the way, we've got three, here's three property management companies that we recommend. Here are three contractors that we recommend. Here are three insurance companies that we use and recommend. You can start packaging these deals with financing and the contractors and the property management companies and the insurance companies and all that. You're going to sell those things like crazy. And you'll make, instead of making five grand on a deal, you'll make 10, 15 or more. That makes sense. Yeah. The other thing that happens is you'll start getting other investors seeing, oh my gosh, that guy is selling deals like crazy. He's got the best buyers. You'll get other investors to start bringing you their deals, and you can partner with them and sell your their deals to your buyers. All right. Cool. Gavin's sending you guys some links here to stuff, but yeah. um, all right. So let's do this. We we wanted to set this up where you can ask us anything. If there is anybody right now on Zoom that you, where you want us to like unmute you, bring you on, where you can ask ask us some questions, please raise your hand right now in Zoom, or type in the chat box and say me, 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 or something like that. Um, and then we'll we'll unmute. You. Oh, we got some here in a minute. Let's do Chris Arnold. All right, Chris Arnold, we're going to bring you over to panelist. So you need to turn your camera on if you can and unmute yourself. There he is. Chris, how are you? Good, how are you? Doing awesome. That's what's happening. You guys are great. I like it. I like your content, man. I'm all over it. Awesome. Good job, by the way. I guess you're the Chris Arnold in the five uh, seller challenge, right? The uh, accountability. You got Correct. four off, four offers out in an hour yesterday through our AI Simple. Good job. Right, right, right. That was a good one. Yeah, no, well, that's great. Thank you so much. Yeah, that worked. I did everything manually last week, and it took forever to get kind of momentum and get going. Yep. But I, but I you know, I talked to my wife. I'm like, hey, we need to look into this REI okay. Simple. Anyway, so I started on Monday. I loaded all the numbers. My VAs pulled last week, and then boom, there we go. Good for you. Awesome. That's no, awesome. Thank you. So I, I, I wrote my question down when I saw you, you're going to have a live thing. So, so yesterday I sent out, I don't know, 89 SMS text messages. I got a ton of responses back. Um, but when you go on Craigslist and you pull from your area, I'm in the San Francisco Bay Area. When you pull from your area, there's a ton of out-of-market people. Right. So those numbers are in there. So all the offers I'm making came outside of that area. Does that make sense? So yeah, I'm not familiar with those areas. I've already done my research on the areas I'm targeting, but I want the contracts. My concern is selling the contract after I get it into that market. Are you trying to do cash deals or lease options or whatever? Right. So I watched Gavin's video the other day. I forget the couple's name, but they were um, they they weren't offering sandwich, but you can offer wholesale sandwich and wholesaling lease option. So I base it on the circumstances of the person. Good. Yeah. And then I say, you know, so two of them are wholesale offers because they're also investors, but they have a ton of equity. And then um, two, and the rest are sandwiches because that's how I'm going to present them. But I'm going to send them all three offers um, and then follow up with the call. Nice. I used to live in Antioch, some very familiar oh, hey. Bay Area. Love Bay Area. And I was there in 2001 uh, and two when prices in Antioch were like 150 grand. Do you remember those days? Uh, I think some of the areas are still in those days. 
<laughs> but yeah, so yes, it was yes. a nicer area of Antioch. Okay, <laughs> right, right. I, okay. I think, in fact, Antioch's one of the markets that I'm focusing in because that's the number two zip code right now. It's a hot zip code. A lot of investors are buying properties there. The, one of the problems is uh, with California in general, not the Bay Area, but California is very expensive and very, very competitive. So I always tell people, you know, start in your backyard, but also don't be afraid to go out outside of your backyard into the small towns, into Fresno's, into Sacramento, into Bakersfield, even, you know, um, and then go to other states. Because in California, your profits are going to be much bigger on an av- on average on a deal, right? You're going to have bigger profits in California. But because of the nature of California and, and the sellers are more optimistic than sellers anywhere else, they think their properties are worth way more than they are. Uh, they think the prices are always going to go up and never will fall. They've forgotten already what happened before. And they think they can just stick a sign in the yard and they'll be able to sell it quickly and easily because there's so much demand. California. Well, that may be that might be true, right? So, in California, you you know, well, let me say this: in St. Louis, I might not only need to send thirty text messages to get five sellers to get one offer accepted, right? In California, I might need to send a hundred texts to get five people on the phone, and maybe like, and, and none of them accept. So I have to like, I just have to do more marketing in California, right? Especially in the Bay Area, San Diego, L.A. So. You're going to have to do more marketing, which is cool because not too many people are willing to do that, but, and you're going to have bigger profits on average per deal. So this is what I'd say. The goal is to talk to five sellers a day and make five offers a day, right? So you may, right. you're going to have to go outside of your area. You know, you're going to have to look at Zillow and go keep on zooming out until you have at least 100, 200 phone numbers that you can text a day to get people to, on the phone and talk to them, right? and make offers, do a lot of follow-up. Um, you may just find that we, we've coached people from LA that are doing deals in multiple different states in the Midwest because they're so much easier to get <coughs> discounts on those properties to where they cash flow. You know, like nobody's going to Antioch to buy a rental property that will cash flow, right? Most people are going there for appreciation. They want a place to park their cash, you know, it, it, they may be lucky if they get fifty to a hundred bucks on cash with cash flow on those properties, but they'll go to Oklahoma, Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri, Indiana, Alabama. They'll go there to buy cash flowing real estate where you can make fifteen percent on your money, right? So we we've coached a lot of people to do deals virtually from California in these other markets. So I don't know if that helps you. Um, just other than the fact that start where you are, that's fine, but keep on zooming out. And until you, you're, you're talking to five sellers a day, you're still making offers and then f- keep the follow-up going. Does that make sense, Chris? That makes perfect sense. And I don't have a problem doing that. I can expand it. I have three VAs pulling in a couple of different markets. I did want to start locally and then get a system going for that and then back up. But you know, I, my main concern is really locking, the, getting the seller to agree and get a contract signed, but not having the back end kind of figured out yet. But I'm I'm okay with grabbing a contract and then you know maybe yeah. that'll create a hustle to sell it. Yeah, mm-hmm. and especially in California. I'm sorry, Gavin. Especially in California, if you can get a creative deal like that structured, you you could sell that especially easy in California because you're now you're selling a deal that. With that's worth five hundred thousand dollars, and you're only asking for a twenty thousand dollar assignment fee or something like that. You know, with the financing's already in place. Yeah. Yeah. I have a lady right now. One of the ones that I spoke with yesterday, she had, you know, I think she was renting it out or doing Airbnb, so it's vacant right now. Hmm. And she wants to sell it, but she also has applicants to lease it, so she kind of has everything ready to go. So she was open to having a. A lease option conversation. That's one of my offers. Oh, yeah. but it's in a rural area and even in other states in Oregon. Um, okay. Which again, that's fine. She's open to it. Let's have that conversation. But then my concern is flipping it on the back end. So I'll have to go into that market and, and find a buyer. I guess. You know, I'm looking right now in Zillow and I just, I'm in the Bay Area. I'm all the way over in Modesto, Stockton. Santa Rosa, I think, up there north. 
And there's 2,700 three plus bedroom houses for rent right now, right? Now, a lot of them aren't property managers. A lot of them aren't going to be motivated. Yeah, we get that. Um, these are just three bedrooms houses. So I'm not even looking at townhomes, right? I'm not even looking at two bedroom condos in the city of San Francisco. There's a lot of properties here that are rentals. If I switch it to Fizbo's, there's probably, you can count them on one hand. Yeah, and my VA had that concern this morning as she wrote me back because I changed the parameters and she said, well, there's only two in Brentwood. So there's only two. And yeah. I said, okay, well, let me look at it. But the four rent, I cold called those last week and it, it wasn't tough, but you have to convince them twice, right? You, they're renting and it's vacant. So you have to convince them like, hey, did, did you want to sell that? Did you Are you open to selling it? And then kind of ask a couple of questions yeah. and segue into, well, here's what I'm looking for is to lease it out for a couple of years and buy it. So it's, it's a two prong from the four rent, right? Yeah. But there's a lot the right of thing, there. volume. There's a lot of properties. So don't, don't be afraid to go out to Stockton, okay. um, Fresno, Bakersfield, even up North. What is that? You said Santa Rosa, so that's like uh, Sacramento, kind of outside Santa Sacramento. Santa Rosa looks like it's north of Petaluma, right? Anyway, the the other thing is as well. Just back to your uh, Craigslist uh, comment of why you're seeing that. It's a known strategy. I used to do it in Phoenix for sticking properties that are nowhere near that area because that's where all the money is. So I used to list properties on Craigslist in San Diego for Phoenix because there's a ton of buyers there, right? That are looking right. for flips, buying holds. So that's why you're probably seeing that is they're throwing them in there because people look in, they, they come up way cheaper, which catches your eye. And then you get investors and different people looking. So it's part of the strategy. So that's number one, why you're probably seeing that on Craigslist. Okay. Um, the other thing as well, starting in the backyard of San Francisco, I agree You know, with Joe, it's, it's going to be harder. And what you need to look at, and everyone that's watching, is you, you have to have the right personality. It's not ability, it's the personality. I'll tell you what I mean by that. It's because a lot of people, if they're new to the business, need wins as quickly as possible. Okay, And it's much easier to go into a Midwest market or somewhere like that and get a small win faster than it is a California market. Because what's going to happen is you might have to work for four months straight, feel like you're beating the same drum, but you could land a $100,000 deal quite comfortably. And that's right. realistically going to happen. But it might take you four months to get it. Where the person that's new to still go and still continue on the same journey, trying to get that, it becomes a struggle, right? Unless you right. have that mindset where what other people need to do is like, how can I get a win fast? I don't care if it's a thousand bucks, if it's a 5,000, whatever, they just want to see that they can do it. And that's when we say, okay, well, you're best to probably come out because you're not going to get that potentially as quick, you know, in, in the California market, unless you go to like a Fresno or, you know, uh, in Riverside or somewhere like that, you know? Actually, those are two markets I'm focused on right now. I'm setting the VAs, VAs up and the phone numbers in RA simple so that we can start blasting in there. I think it's a volume for California. It's going to yeah, be it's more. 100%. Yeah, uh, it, it is uh, 100% that. And as well, you, you want to make sure that when you talk volume, it can get, you have to watch the word volume. Because what happens is, is that you go heavy, funnel volume, and then you cut corners trying to filter through things. And then your mm. process changes, right? Remember, the job at hand is to get them on the phone. Okay. Your job is in sending them text messages is to get them on the phone. Now, do we need 20 text messages to get five or do we need 100? That's something that you're going to have to play with. But don't start doing 500 texts and then you're just trying to ask like super hard qualifying questions because yeah. when it comes to creative finance, if it's not delivered properly, they're going to say no, but they don't know why they're saying no. It's the unknown. So it's no. Does that make sense? 
Absolutely. I sent out 89 yesterday and I was kind of scrambling to answer and qualify yeah. and, and ask questions. So I need to scale it back. Great. And that's advice. it. Because you just do 20, you can do another 20. So yeah. I'm not saying do 20 and stop, but do it so you're comfortable. Because I see it with clients. They do 80 and then they melt and melt down. Like can't keep up <laughs> all over the place. And then you want to text. No, you don't want to talk. I ain't got time to talk because I've got all these messages I need to respond. So then the plan now is changed. Now we've gone from the plan being on the phone to, well, I've got too many messages. I can't talk to this guy because all these other guys are texting me. So then I get into text conversations that's, and then you're going backwards. Make sense? That's absolutely exactly what happened yesterday. <laughs> I, know. I see it all thank the you. time. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Good job. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Excellent. That. I was um, just looking at a property here on Zillow that I found in the Bay Area in Merced. I guess you wouldn't call Merced the Bay Area, but it's a nice looking little property, $1,000 and $1,050 a month in rent, 1,200 square foot, three bedrooms, two baths. Yeah, it's out there. It's not, that's definitely not the Bay Area. That's Central Valley, I think they call it, right? But anyway, the Modesto. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Okay, that looks like a a good market. What price parameters did you put in? I just did three plus bedrooms, rentals, houses, right? Gotcha. And I found this property here. I just looked it up a little bit. The owner has owned it for six and a half years. There's only there's only um, I'm looking at mortgage history. It it has about a forty thousand dollar mortgage on it, so there's a lot of equity. That it's worth about one hundred and seventy thousand. Uh, and but if you if you in REI Simple, you can pull up the owner's info, and mm -hmm. see you can pull up their name, and uh, with just their name and their mailing address, you can skip trace them, call them, send them an email, send them a letter. It's listed on Zillow with a property management company. But um, you can still market to them. You don't have to call the property management company. You can send a letter to the owner. You can skip trace the owner and call them. Pretty cool. So there's a lot of opportunity in California right now. And this is why it's so important if you are investing in California or a big market like it, that you focus on the, focus on the um, creative, offering creative options. Cool. C Chris, thanks, man. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. All right. Cool. We've got, let's do Scott. Let's bring Scott Perry over. Where did I, did I lose him? Uh, there we go. I got it here. Scott Perry, I'm going to bring you on over. You got to turn your camera on and unmute yourself. Scott, there he is. Hey, Scott. Scott, how are you? Oh, you muted. I should Scott. probably have to unmute. There we go. What's going on? Hey, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, the best of the best. How can we help you, man? Well, I think um, I have that uh, cactus problem. Uh-oh. My phone is really heavy in a cactus, and it's just, I don't know, I just get tongue-tied on the phone. Let's do a role play. Of course. Let's do it. Let's, let's, um, Gavin, you'll be the investor. Scott, you'll be the homeowner. Can we okay. do that? Sure. And let's just say, where, do, where are you, Scott? What market are you in? I'm in Arizona. Okay. What part? I'm in uh, the East Valley. Is that uh, near okay. Phoenix? Yeah, yeah it's it's Scottsdale, Chandler. Yep. Okay. Well, let's do this. Let's say you own a rental property on Zillow. You've had it for rent for a couple weeks. Gavin's VA sends you a text. The text says, hey, we saw your nice rental here on Humboldt Avenue. You wouldn't be interested in selling it, would you? And you respond back, yeah, maybe if the offer's right. Okay. So Gavin then is going to call you and ask you about your property in uh, Phoenix. Can we do that? Absolutely. All right. Okay. So hey, Scott, you say ring, ring, hello. Hello. Hey, Scott, how you doing? This is Gavin. We're just texting back and forth. How you doing? Oh, how you doing, Gavin? Yeah, good. Have you got a minute? Sorry, I've just randomly called you there. Can you talk for a minute? 
Yeah, absolutely. Okay, perfect. I know we're texting back and forth about your property on 123 Main Street in Scottsdale. And you said you might be interested in selling it. Is that right? Yeah, it's up for rent right now. Yeah, I know it's up for rent. Yeah. Um, but you did say that you might consider selling it. Is that right? Yeah, if that price was right, of course. Okay, well, what price are you thinking? What price are you going to offer? Oh, that's a good question. Well, let me, before I do that, uh, it looks like, let me ask you a few questions. Just real quick on me. I'm an investor, Scott. I live actually in Scottsdale myself, and I'm looking to buy more property, okay? okay. I do make cash offers, but I also make all the different, you know, finance offers and stuff like that. So let me ask you a few questions. Obviously, I know Scottsdale well. It looks like this is uh, just off Shea in the 101. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's a really nice area. So how long have you had this as a rental? I've had it for about uh, four years. Okay, nice. And uh, how long has it been vacant? About two months. Two months. Okay. Are these pictures up to date and current? Yes, they are. Okay. How come, why do you think it's already rented by now? That's a great question. Yeah, when you probably that, trying, I yeah, yeah, when I was trying to resolve. <laughs> yeah, when you're trying to figure out, right? Okay. Well, look, would you, you know, you probably won't consider this. I said about buying it and, you know, I don't want to offer you a low, you know, a low offer for cash. But if I could give you, I know you're asking, uh, is it 1700 a month? Is that right? Yes. I don't know if I can do that. If I could give you about 1400 a month and take care of all maintenance repairs, maybe buy it for about 220 in in a couple of 2 3 years, you know, would that would that interest you at all? I'd probably need all cash. I need to use it to invest in another property. Oh, okay. So you do need the cash. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How many uh, you said you're an investor, right? Yeah, I am. I, I had this happen. How many deals have you got right now? How many deals have I how got? Many, how, how many houses do you have right now? I I have about, well, off role play. Do you not have any? I do not, no. Okay. I don't have any currently right now, you know, because I buy and finance them. I do fix and flips. I resell them. I'm not holding any right now. And then that's why I'm actually reaching out to you to currently because that's what I want to do. So I'm looking to rent for a year or two and then, uh, and then have the option to buy it. So that's actually what I'm uh, trying to do right okay. now. Got it. Yeah. So um, what did you think about that? I mean, that 220, I mean, what do you think if in, a, in a three years, you know, I'd only be willing to give you 1400 a month. I am, you know, I've got to make some money on this. As you know, I'm an investor. This is a rental. You're not obviously doing it for nothing. So there's nothing to hide about that. But you, you want to cash out, uh, Scott, but I, I just probably can't get anywhere near the, you know, a cash offer for you. So uh, what do you, what do you think about that? Rent it for a couple of years. Could you do 15? A month? Ooh, could I do 15? Possibly, yeah. Yeah, I, I might be able to do 15. It, like, I'm going to have to look at the numbers. If I could do 15, how quickly could you move forward? Well, we could do it right away. Okay, so if I could give you 1,500 at 220, mm -hmm. Bearing in mind off role play, um, this would be about two eighty that the deal would be worth. Right. Um, I, okay, yeah. So, well, obviously you've made that easy for me, right? Which is fine. That's right. what I'm saying, okay. Well, look, let me let me check the numbers, and uh, I'm going to get back with you. How? And now I'd be saying I'd be wrapping it up. Scott, what's your email address to get this agreement over to you? Scott at gmail dot com. Okay, great. So let me look at this. Uh, I should be able to over the, have this over in. Probably about 45 minutes. It's nearly 4 o'clock now. Can you talk at 5 in an hour? Sure, absolutely. Okay, and just one last question, Scott. I, I, didn't know, I don't know if you're married or I don't know, you know currently what your situation is. Do you have like, anyone else that you need to speak to regarding before we do this? Oh, no, I can handle that myself. Okay, great. So 5 o'clock then in an hour, I'll give you a call back and I'll have this sent over and we'll discuss it. Okay, perfect. All right, thanks. All right, so...
you you made it easy, right. which is fine, right? Because again, with the role play, you can, you know, if I would have been the seller, then I could have, I, I could have positioned it, but you twisted it up, it. right? You you gave it me easy, but you know, you didn't even question my price. I've gone in. I know the Scottsdale area. I know that area would be, you know, everything's probably over three hundred thousand comfortably in, in that area. So that's why, you know, I, I position that. But the, <clears throat> but the thing is, is that you see how you did there? It, it flowed, right? Right. And this is way harder than actually getting on the phone, believe it or not. I'd actually like to do another quick one where you're now the investor, right? So you've had a little ease in, right? Seller. So you're getting tongue tied. So that's going to happen now more than it is with a seller, believe me, right? So if you can get over and just get, you know, comfortable with it. But you see how I'm not using the words of, you know, uh, lease purchase, lease option, own a right. fine. I actually did it. Steve Zimmer, I don't know if he's on. He did a great job. I, I did a role play where he was an investor. We had no idea he was going to do an owner of finance. And he pitched an owner of finance to me without using the words. It was really, really good. And that's what we're trying to do. So I'm using things like, you know, can I rent it? This is what I'm doing. I didn't lie. So you said, oh, you might be brand new. So I didn't want to go, oh, I've got 10 properties because you can't say that. So I said, right. oh, I don't have any. That's why I'm trying to do this, Scott. I'm just being honest. Right. No, that's what I did. I, I had that happen in the in the the person that owned the property. They have a renter in it right now that's mm -hmm. willing. You know, they're doing month to month. It's fourteen hundred a month. Willing to do a three year lease, and they're just trying to get out of it. Now, I found out later that they happen happen to own a uh, construction company, so they're right. doing little bits here and there. So that's why she asked me how many how many properties I had. I said well, I don't have any at the moment right now. So yeah. then when I offered them. I think they're they're they were like two seventy seven. I think I offered them two forty one, but I haven't gotten any response back. So it's like thirty five thousand difference. Mm -hmm. Okay, but because we don't know what, which way which way the market's going to go. Well, no, but again, you have an option, don't you? You're not right. you're not married to it, and then if the market tells you it's a lease option, you have the option to buy. So if it goes, then you can get out, right? right. Because you can't control that again. Um, right. But the good thing is with that contact, they're probably offering because of the construction. They're thinking, well, what else? If this guy's got, you know, multiple properties, then maybe we can get work from him. Uh, we can do business. Right. Like that, right? So that's where I would have said, yeah, I know, but I have a massive, uh, you know, network of people in the Phoenix area. I know loads of investors because that's what's going to keep them on the, oh, you do? Oh, yeah. Well, uh, if anyone needs any help or any construction, you know, we're here and uh, everyone's trying to get the business, right? Well, okay. Yeah. No, absolutely. I'll keep that in mind. But let me ask you this about this property and then you back to it. But in that's the store, that they've got something that they want from you, right? Yes. And, and Phoenix is probably the easiest place to, to, to network. Right. I mean, it's ridiculous. Very competitive. Yes. It's very competitive. What you have in terms of collaboration, I mean, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, you can literally do three or four meetings a day that has the word investor titled on it across Phoenix. It's oh, insane. yeah. So there is that. Well, okay, let's do another quick one here. So I want you to be the seller. Sorry, I'm the seller. You're going to be the investor. Okay. Okay. So have you been doing mainly rentals or sell by owners? I've been doing uh, old listings on Redfin uh, for sale by owner, mostly. Okay. So this is sell by owner. All right. And you've messaged me if I consider renting it. Gotcha. I said maybe. And now you're calling me. You ready? Yep. All right. Ring, ring. Hello. Hello, Gavin. This is Scott. We were just uh, texting back and forth. Yeah, Scott. How are you? Good. Hey, I was uh, calling you about that 123 Main Street. Um, and you were possibly interested in renting it? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I mean, I got your, your text and it intrigued me. I mean, I'm just trying to sell it, but maybe I'd rent it. Do you, do you mind telling me a little bit about the property? Yeah, it's a 3-2. Uh, it's at uh, Shea in the 101. And, uh, it, you know, really good, really good area. Uh, do you know the area well? I, I know it pretty good, yes. I'm, I'm yeah. from here. Okay, yeah. So it's, it's a good area. It's a 3-1. It's 1,500 square foot, and um, it's been vacant now about uh, three weeks. May I ask why you're selling it? 
Well, good question. So this was a rental and uh, me and my wife were going to start traveling. And, you know, this was kind of the last one. So we just thought, well, let's sell this. And we've got a main house. And well, that was kind of all. It's been a great rental, to be honest. So uh, I just thought it was time to sell. Oh, okay, great. So you're uh, traveling now? No, I'm not because of this uh, virus thing. We should have been, um, but I'm actually stuck in Scottsdale still right now. So if I could rent it from you, say for 1400 a month, would that be something you'd consider? Like maybe uh, a year or two? No, I mean, I was renting it just for 17 uh, before, so I'd want to get 17 for it. And you're firm on the 17? Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't want it any less than that. Yeah, I'm not sure that'll actually work for me. But maybe I could, uh, you know, just send you over an offer and uh, then we could uh, chat about it if you have any questions and all. Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. Yeah, that's fine. Wh which, what's the best email I can get a hold uh, of you at? Gmail.com. Okay, great. So now if I could give you a cash offer, what would you take on that? If I could. Well, I have it what? listed at, at, at 290 right now. Is there any wiggle room there? Yeah, there's, a, there's a little bit. I'd probably go down to about 275. Okay, 275. Okay, great. Okay. So let me shoot you over that email and I'll, and I'll send you over an offer and uh, we can uh, chat then. Okay, great. So sounds good. Thanks. Okay, great talking to you. Okay, awesome. Good job. Okay, so great job. So it flowed. There's a few things like if we were going to analyze that that you could right. have done, right? You kind of cut it off and then bought a cash offer up. Gotcha. Right? So, but you, but you did get there. Uh, the other thing is I shut the 17 down and you said, I don't think I can make that work. Great. Right, because you're going in at sandwich lease option, right? This right. Is investment. Uh, I could have said to you, "Well, are you going to come and see it? Are you going to come and live in it?" Um, I never, I never, I, I didn't. Right, um, we didn't get it. We didn't get there, but again, that could have come up, which is a normal one that, that would have come up, right? But you're the fact that you're going away now to run them numbers, you can come back and then transition into the assignment lease option, right? This is now positioned perfectly. For the assignment because here's the thing this isn't rocket science right if you have a for sale by owner trying to sell, what are they trying to do they're trying to sell the property right? mm -hmm. that is what they are trying to do so if they are willing to rent it then they will do or will be open to a lease option because then they get the both the best of both world right because they're trying to sell it, well, they would rent it. Well, if, what if we could rent it with the option to buy? Then we kind of do in both of what they want, right? Gotcha. What they would do. Uh, they don't know that yet, but that's what your mindset is. That this is, this is going to happen, right? And that's then your next conversation as, as transition. So you've offered me the 14 to get the cash flow. I've said no, 17, no lower. So now you're going to come back and you could make me an offer. Now you could make me an offer of the still the sandwich lease option, right? But I, I'm not going to take it because one, the price is going to be lower and the, the rent's going to be lower. But when you get back on the phone, this is where it's a perfect transition into an assignment lease option. Because if it's the price that's the problem, right? Mm -hmm. I'm willing to sell it for this price and I'm willing to rent it for this price and they're willing to do a lease option. They just don't know it yet. So that's when you can then transition into the assignment lease option, giving him what he wants, what he wants over like two years. Oh, gotcha. Okay. That's how you, you see what, that. yeah, you see how yeah. that transitions? Mm -hmm. Cause you could have gone straight to it, but if you didn't deliver it right. Right. Cause you've already called that it's not for you, right? This isn't going to work for me. But then when you get back on the phone, you're going to be like, look, and if it was you, look, Scott, I've looked at the numbers, you know, I, I really can't give you any more than 14. And, and to be honest, I know you want 275. I'm probably going to be around 260 in three years. But I'll take care of all, all maintenance and repairs. Probably not going to work, is it? And that's how I would say. It. And then he'd go, no, no way. I've got to get 17 or I've got to get this amount. Right. And then I would transition and say, well, look, Scott, I don't know if I can do this. I'm not saying I can, you know, if, we, if I could get you them numbers 
of seventeen hundred a month and and get you your two seven five in a couple of years, what would you want to do then? And that's right. when now I'm transitioning to close. Right. Right. And then I'm then I'm gonna be going into well look, I'm not gonna be staying in the middle of the deal, right? But we do work with other buyers that might be interested. I'm not sure if they will be. Uh, I, I can kind of see. And then this is where you can hire a realtor or whatever, right? To market the property. Market the property. And, and you'll go. And then you'll, and then I'll go into my non-exclusive agreement. Well, look, Scott, I might be able to help you out. This is not really, you know, the ideal situation for me, but I might be able to help you on this. Uh, do you know what a non-exclusive agreement is? And yeah. Yes or no? And you, whatever you said, I will go, okay. So if you said no, I would tell you what it is. Or Okay, so you know what it is. So I'm not going to be tying this property up. So I'm going to send you over an agreement based on the numbers, but you can cancel this at any time. You know, if someone wants to buy your property tomorrow, I want you to accept it. But I, I'm willing to take a look and see what we can do, but I need to get this back. So I'm going to send this over 1700 for 275 in two years. I'm going to put that together and get it over. As soon as you get me that back, I can then see what interest I can get. And like I said, if you sell it tomorrow, no, no problem, no big deal, take the offer. How does that sound? That's great. Okay. And then I'll go again and go, okay, so look, I'm going to send it. And uh, I, you know, I don't want to, you, you're ready to make this decision. I don't want to be chasing you or feel like, you know, this is going to be a, I don't want to do any of that, but I'm willing to, you know, help you out with it. And I'm going to go again, I'm going to send it and then I'm going to get it signed. And then I will do, go into the assignment. Makes sense. Right. And then you that's how you're going to close the assignment. But I didn't force it. He put it himself. He went into the assignment by saying, I need this number. He's willing to rent it. He's trying to sell it. It all fits into an assignment based on that scenario. I gotcha. Because he wouldn't come down to seven. He wouldn't come down yeah, to the four. I can't do his assignment. I can't do a sandwich. Got it. But we went there first. We eliminated it. So you see the position, mm -hmm. like, and that's the truth. I'm personally, I'm not interested in an assignment, but I'll do it. But right, it's not like I'm going in for what I want, and I'm not scared about that. Scott, I want to make money. I'm an investor. This is what I want, and I understand you don't want to do that, and this is the reasons. So I can do this to help you out. You see what oh, I'm mean? right? Yeah, that makes perfect sense. The way you just explained it, exactly. And you're positioning it like, right. oh, so you'll give me this. Well, these what objections has he got? I'm right. giving you this, I'm so giving you that. I mean, there's nowhere else to go. He's put himself in that position, so there's nowhere else to go but sign. And then we know what's coming, so we hit it head on. Scott, you're probably thinking, how do I get paid? Are you thinking that? Yeah, absolutely. I do. Okay. How do you get paid? Yeah, so, you know, the tenant that's going to be coming in, the one that's going to be pre-screened and, and we come sort all that out, they're actually going to be paying me. So you don't have to pay me. You're not bothered about them paying me, right? As long as you haven't got to pay me. Is that okay? No, oh, absolutely. All right. There we go. Done. So that's now done. We ain't got to deal with that one again. So now when I get my 8,000 or my 5,000, when we come to a sign, this has already been spoke about. Gotcha. You see? But it's done in a way of, of not saying, well, I'm going to go and get 8,000 down. Well, hold on a minute. How much of that 8,000 are you going to give me? Now you're, you're bringing an objection up for no mm -hmm. reason. All I'm saying is they're going to pay me. Is that okay? Right. Gotcha. And then, mm -hmm. Because it doesn't matter. As long as he's got his numbers. Right? And, I'm, and I've said this on other calls, and I generally do this. If, he, if you would say to me, well, I'll do it, but I want $8,000 down. And then I will say, Scott, I'm going to be honest with you. You want everything. Like you want the price, you want the rent, you want it. I can't do it. It's just not going to work for me. And now I'm pulling away again. Right. Oh, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Right. Exactly. That's what I'm after. And that's where the motivation will come. You, you're, all I'm trying to do is strike for motivation. I've not got nothing to sell. All I'm doing is positioning, right? I'm positioning and I'm looking for strikes from you. All I'm, I'm just trying to get you to, to bite. Think of it. It's like fishing, right? Right. I'm trying to get you to bite. And when I get the bite, I, okay, there's the motivation. I've got him. Like, what is it? What, and I could have gone, you know, in our role play, when you said, I need the money, mm -hmm. I should have gone deeper. Mistake, analyzing my own deal. I should have gone, well, why do you need the money? What, do you, what are you doing with it? And you said, well, you did actually give it me. You said you need to invest in more properties, right? Right. 
But that's a need and a want, you know. It's right. kind of like, yeah, that's what you want to do, but you don't need to do that, right? Correct. It's not like I've got to pay my other mortgage or I've got to get out of this flip out so I'm going to foreclose on it. They're two different scenarios. Anyway, hopefully that helps. It did. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. But you did a great a job. Lot. You did well, a great thanks. job. You really did. That was good. It was really good, yeah. Scott. Thanks, good thanks. Appreciate it. All right. Listen, let's do this. We've got do you have a f- 10 more minutes, Gavin? 20 more minutes? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. I'm, I'm I, d- I just yeah. really like the role plays. I think the feedback we're getting here is, is really good. Aaron says, this is a plethora of knowledge. Thank um, you. Great role play. And, guy, and, and that's the yeah. thing. Like, Scott did a great job, and he's not the only one in the position that, that's struggling. And if you can do this on a live I'm telling you, and, and even for me, like the calls are so much easier because no one's yeah. listening and you're just like, I don't care if it's a realtor or a property manager. It doesn't matter. Like you just, you just get better as you, as you go. And, um, and the more you do it, the, the better you get. All right. So let's do another one or two role plays here. I think this is really good. Let's do Dionisio. Dionisio, you raised your hand. I'm going to try to bring you over. So turn your camera on and unmute yourself. Dionisio, I believe, right? Yeah, everyone calls me Dio for short. Is my video not working? No. I'm on here. How you doing, uh, Dio? I'm good, man. How are you? Oh, there we go. Yeah, uh, good. Yes. What's going on, guys? How much? Okay. How can we help you, man? Do you have a question? So, do you do a role play? Yeah, role? I've got. Yeah, I've got a question. So I, I I bought the wholesale and lease option course, and I got to hand it to you, man. The way you laid it out, so great. I've never done a lease option before, and last month we closed on one before uh, Corona. So nice. super stoked, super stoked, man. Followed it to a T, and now we Where's just. Where's my testimonial, Dio? Do, oh, you show me. Tell me where to put it, man. Hands down, I'll I'll, I'll take care of that. Send, so, me, send me some details, joe at joemccall.com. I'll send you a nice gift. Okay. Sounds good. You got it. So now I did the uh, advertising on Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, did this little thing, and we just actually got the prequal team to do the prequal, and they handled oh, it. Cool. cool. Long story short, we've got a tenant buyer that's going to be moving in by the end of the week, and nice. now the light bulbs are going off, right? So now I'm like, how do I... I know I can scale it, and if I'm raising private money, which is what I'm working on now, how do you structure that? Because I, I don't really know how that works all together. So can you raise private capital for these for these lease options? And if so, how do you structure that where it well, makes sense? The tricky part is when you're raising private money, usually the lender wants the note, once their investment secured by some kind of real estate, right? Right. And you can't attach, you, you can't secure a private investor to a property that you just control through a lease option. You have to own the property. So, so then you can put them in second position or third position and secure their note with the property. Got it. So, you know, if you find a good deal that has equity and cash flow, and you want to borrow some money from a private investor, I used to do a lot of that. You got to just make sure there's enough equity in there so that your investor is protected in case something goes wrong. You could sell the house if you needed to and get the money back to pay the investor back, right? Okay. Private money, where that's going to come in is uh, when you're talking to a seller who wants to just sell their house. Like, I don't want to do a lease option. I just want to sell it. So then you can give them a cash offer knowing in the back of your mind, like, you know what? I've got the money. I can actually close on this today if I had to because you've got a private investor behind you that will fund the deal if it's a good enough deal. So having that private investor helps with your confidence level and just as you're talking to sellers, you know you've got the money that you can actually close on the deal. So you come into it with a much better positioning, you're much more authority. And so it helps to have that kind of private money behind you, right? Does that make sense? Even if you're using something like Lee Arnold's Capital Syndicate Program or you have, uh, I know some guys that, have three or four different business credit cards with about fifty to seventy five thousand dollars in in credit available to them. Okay. They know if they had to, they could put that house on their credit card 
for a few weeks while they flip it, and make 10 grand, pay off the credit cards. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, no, no. It makes sense. So is that, does that answer your question though? Yeah. It points me definitely in the right direction. The, the other question I had, cause you brought up the equity part. I mean, is it, it, it would the same amount of equity need to be in that deal as if, uh, you know, when we normally do it, like wholesale wise, is, does there have to be like 30% equity in there if we are going to secure some? Well, you, when, when, if you're borrowing on a private money, if you're borrowing private money to buy a deal, normally you want to be at no more than 75, 80% loan to value. Right to protect that investor. Okay. okay. Sometimes what I've done before is I've had two private investors. I had somebody in first position and somebody in second position, but still you want to make sure whoever's in second position, there's not more than, there's not less than 15 to 20% equity in the house. Okay. You just want to make sure, especially if you don't know what's going to happen in a year or two from now, right? Right. If the values fall, you want to make sure your investors are protected. You always want to make sure your private investors are paid first. Before you ever get paid, you want to make sure your private investors are paid first. They're well protected. Um, that's That goes without saying, everybody, you, you know, you all know that, I'm sure. But that's super important, especially as we go forward now. I mean, you can get into serious trouble if you... Um, you're not ethical and and in right standing, and you're not taking care of your private investors. Right. So it's important to, you know, you you fully disclose everything. You make sure they're well protect, protected. And um, I was going to say something else, but I forget. Okay, it'll come back to me later. Does that okay. make sense? No, it does, and I, and I appreciate you taking the time to answer the question. Where where do you want me to send that testimonial again? Joe at JoeMcCall dot com. Yeah, yeah. Wait till the deal it. closes and you get the money. Yep. Let me know about it. You know, there's a really good book that you all should read called Get the Money, I believe. Let me look it up on Amazon real quick. And there's a good point here for everyone to take while you're doing that is tenant buyers are still moving forward. Okay. So that is proof not coming from us. Cash buyers are still buying. Tenant buyers are still buying. It's all about personal situation you know, and, and who keeps jobs and who don't and what they do for a living. There's so much to go in that, that goes into this. John, I, I agree. We, were, we weren't sure as it was our first time, but just off of Facebook Marketplace, I think we generated somewhere around 73, 70, between 73 and 80 leads just off that one property over a span of four weeks. Yeah, and, and let me just add again to that, which is awesome. So great job. It's because as well, I don't even know anything about the deal, but it's yeah. because it's price price right. Okay. We will always say if it's price right, the rents are good and it's right, just the whole price and the package is good, you'll always find tenant buyers. Because you will. And and it's and if if one's like if someone's a client comes to me and says, I'm not getting any interest, all right? It's not in front of the right people. Okay, maybe that, or it's not a deal, or it's the location, it's something. Right. So then we have to look at it and analyze it and go, hold on a minute, I can get these properties for 1200 a month, and you want 15 No, yeah. that's why it's not moving, because your rents are too high, right? So, but if, as your case, because we had the same thing, we did one as a test in a case study in Florida, and we had 80 in the first five days on this thing, because it was price right, right. you know? So they're, they're fighting over it if, it if it's a deal, just like a cash buyer. So, but yeah, good, great job. That's no, thank you. Yeah, like I said, it, I, I couldn't have figured that out without the uh, the step by step instructions, the way it's laid out in that system. So, kudos nice. to you guys, man. Keep it rocking. Hey, Dio, some yes, people sir. are asking you, how did you show the house during the whole COVID nineteen crisis? Things going on right now. Uh, so the property for us, it was it was vacant. We had a tired landlord who lived in Hawaii, and long story short is we had a, an agent down there. Her name is Sakina Gamble, and uh, we kind of walked her through the process on how uh, what the lease option was as best as we could, according to the videos you had, and she jumped on board with us, and now she's throwing us other opportunities for us to kind of get scale this thing out. So yeah. she helped you show the house? She just... Yeah. Did she use like a lockbox to tell people? Yeah, like, Go ahead. exactly. Yeah. So she put, she uh, put a lockbox on it and um, she's just been showing it. So we, we just forward the leads over to her, share her information and she gets, uh, she gets some, some deals that way too. And 
we'll figure out how we partner up going forward, but it's, it's been cool nice. so far. So where are you investing right now? Uh, right now I'm in Alabama. I'm in San Antonio, but we're based out of Boca Raton, Florida. So we are doing this virtually. And you found somebody in Hawaii or is this a deal in Hawaii? It was a paper call. We ran a PPC. We were testing out PPC and someone called in, you know, wanting to sell their house. Cool. You know, they, and they were, the house is in Alabama. So we just walked them through the process and ended up scoring the deal. Bam. Nice there you go, Dio. Thanks for awesome. sharing, man. And no, I appreciate it. it, man. Thanks for putting it together. Awesome. And there's another little thing just from that, guys, that you pick up. The situation led to the motivation. He's in Hawaii. He's over it, and he wants to sell it, right? This is you, – you can't – it doesn't matter if we talk – you know, you don't have to be that good at sales, right? If you can learn some positioning and, and you find motivation, you talk to enough people, you're going to get deals done. So good yeah. job. Very good. I want to say one more thing too. There was a, you you were talking about raising private money. There's a good book that you guys should get called Getting the Money. I put a link to it in the Zoom chat, but it's written by a lady named Susan Lassiter Lyons. It's called Getting the Money, How to Raise $250,000 in Private Money in the Next 30 Days. Go check that out and you can get it for eight bucks on Amazon Kindle. And uh, it's really good. It's just it's, you have to be real careful when you're soliciting for private money. You can't do it without the right proper licensing. So you can't just go advertise, hey, you know, trying to raise private money. But the way she teaches it is just an everyday normal conversation with people that you meet. Well, you used to meet, that you will meet soon as you're at the grocery store, the coffee shop, networking with friends and family. Just when they ask you, what do you do? You, instead of just saying, I'm an investor, you say, well, I help private investors place their money in real estate that earns them 10 to 15% on their money. What do you do? You know what I'm saying? Just things like that. I'm an investor who, um, who, who places money on, on deals and, gives, and secures their investments with real estate, something like that. And it's a really, really good book. You all should check it out. All right. Thanks, man. Thank you. Have a good one, guys. Yeah, good Good job. This is so much fun. We got to do this more, Gavin. I know. Um, Let's do one more. Let's do uh, Dan Linton, I believe. Dan. I'm going to bring you on over, Dan. Make sure your camera's on, your mic is unmuted. Dan. None of these were planted either, guys. We didn't like try to recruit people. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> that's a good point. I'm not that smart. <laughs> yeah, no, Dan, no, are you on, Dan? Um, maybe we'll let Dan come back later. Mark Monroe is the next one. Mark Monroe. Dan, I'm going to kick you out, but then let you come back in later. I'll try again later. So Mark Monroe, we're going to bring you over, Mark. Make sure you turn your camera on and you unmute yourself, Mark. We're getting good feedback here. Oh, you guys hear me? got a bad headset. Oh, what's going on? Hey, how are you guys doing? Mark, hey. Uh, hey, about time. I've uh, been following you guys for quite some time. You guys put some amazing content out. What's so bizarre is the other gentleman's here in Boca Raton as well, right where I am down here. Now. You're in Florida? Uh, yeah, I am. It's I was going to guess. I was just going <laughs> to guess Florida because the white walls, the, the, <laughs> night, the painting in the back. Yeah. My, my other half did that painting. Oh, really? Wow, yeah, that's beautiful. That's awesome. Yeah. She's an international flight attendant. She's not flying right now. You, you look like you have some f- f- a hairstyle from Florida, too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Similar to mine. <laughs> so you guys have amazing content. And uh, I've been following you guys. I, I did Wendy Patton's book many, many years ago before the big boom. And it worked really well. And yeah. a lot's changed with the Dodd-Frank Act and everything. So kind of getting back into it. Good. I have a really good system. I got a couple of BAs. My system's working really well. I'm running into a problem with my offers. When I'm sending the offers out, I, my last four offers, the non-binding offers without doing any commitment, seems like about the second week into it, they've changed their minds for whatever reason. And I've had four of them like that. Then there's one that I actually, I, I went and put a month payment down, committed, and that one turned out to be a nightmare. And uh, I was holding out for a little while. And what happened was I kind of got a, 
a little worried because I was carrying the payments and I was getting ready for a second payment. So I went and put a tenant buyer in there that ended up being a nightmare and I have to go through the eviction process. So I'm trying to figure out the, the happy medium point in between of getting them locked down, showing the property, keep them committed. So what, what do you recommend the best way of going about this? Well, well, and, well, and this is really price. important. Gavin, what? I was going to say, what price point was it? Yeah. Um, the last one, well, it was a great one. It, the last one, it was um, in Orlando. It was, she wanted 280, showed 270 on it. And it was approximately worth about 330 up there. Uh -huh. And I got her onto a five-year term. She was great on it. I talked her, her payments, uh, talked her into doing a FHA streamline to bring her payments down. And I was going to do it for 1800 a month with her with PITI. And I could probably rent it for about 23 to 2400 Okay. It was good. Everything was great. And then after like the second week, she decided to change her mind on the last So, okay, that's not the one that went bad though. Oh, no, the other one was up in Ocala. So that one went bad is um, I had that one down. That price was, think about uh, a two, around 220 ish. Yeah, 220. And, um, and I was getting people in it. The problem was it needed some work. It needed probably, I had somebody go through and a real estate agent go through and they didn't really point out all the problems that it needed work. So it needed roughly about $10,000. So I found somebody that was a contractor saying, oh, you know what? I can do the work. So I said, what I'll do is I'll take the 10,000 option fee. I'll knock it down and off for 5,000. You can use that money to put the work in. So we agreed to it. And he and then he went in there and started taking photos of the place saying, oh, this is not up the code. This is not up the code. This is not up the code. So now he stopped paying and he's trying to say, oh, I'm using that money for the rent. So we're going through the whole eviction process. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, there's two, two things there, right? One, you get him to do the work before he moves in. Yeah. Number one. And number two, and this is a common problem, is that everyone jumps at the first person that raises the hand because you get excited. I get it, right? Mm -hmm. And and sometimes you have to be patient, especially like... Oh, I learned. Like, I, I learned like, my lesson on this one. On that. Yeah, like take, let it run and, mm -hmm. and get people in and make sure you have the right quality of tenant that can actually qualify within the allotted time. Now, he was doing a handyman special, so, you know, maybe you are limited a little bit, but there's mm -hmm. one thing that you made a mistake there, which would have been do the work before you move in. Yeah, I did a handyman special on another property and worked out great. I never had any issues. I knocked it down. They went in and I didn't have any problems. So because of that, I stopped putting the down payment because I was, you know, I, was, I didn't want to carry a second month going into it. So I'm trying to figure out putting the offers out there and really locking them in. Or, and that's the problem I'm running into. Like I, like I said, the last four offers I put out there, everything's good. We sign. We had a great relationship. I, I communicate with them. I, I get to know them really well. I'll spend a good like hour on the phone with them and really build a rapport with them. And uh, like the last one, I knew her, everything about her, her children. But then after like the second week, they kind of get cold feet. And, and I'm already spending you, money on the marketing. I'm sorry? Is that because you haven't found a tenant buyer yet? Correct. Okay. So, so do you, you recommend communicate that to her that it's going to take a while? I did. I, uh, I said, because I used the coronavirus, I said, hey, we have to push this out to June. You don't, probably don't want people going into the house. And she goes, oh, yeah, I can have people coming into the house. Not a problem. So I started marketing. I probably spent about $500 on that one for marketing on that particular property. Then she decided I had a realtor um, go out there. The realtor's put a lockbox on it. And then she decided, oh, you know, it's not for me. Okay. Just well, that back. sucks. And, you know, that's happened to me before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying um, to, is there a better way of, like, getting them to commit? Do you, besides the non-binding or do you there, there's a couple things i'm thinking about number one and it sounds like you're already doing this but i'm just saying this for you and for everybody else when you lock these deals up when you get them under contract it's really important you have you continue that conversation with them you're you're texting them calling them at least a couple times a week mm -hmm. just letting you know we're still on it you know i've been getting calls we're getting so number one, you got to stay in communication during that time immediately after. Just let them know everything's going well. Let them know you're still working on it. The second thing is oh, start marketing it right away. I see a lot of people, and I made this mistake. I get it under contract. Man, I'm busy. 
And it may not be a week until I get the pictures and get it on my website and start marketing the property. Again, it sounds like you were marketing it right away, but yeah, like I got two, I got two right now that I didn't sign up the non-binding offer. They're ready to go, but I already started doing the marketing just to kind of get momentum going. Sure. I've been kind of stalling the seller a little bit on my end because I'm trying to like, you know, because of the, what's been happening the last, so I'm just trying to find that happy medium. There are a few more things I'll say to this. Like number one, start marketing, always start marketing homes right away. It sounds like you're doing that. Stay in regular communication with the tenant buyer during this time. In fact, um, there's one guy I know who sets up an autoresponder inside of his CRM that sends the seller a text and an email every Mm -hmm. uh, once a week, just pre-written, hey, this is what's going on. The other thing you might think about doing is make your agreements. If you're in a real competitive market and there's high demand, maybe make your agreements exclusive. In other words, um, right in my standard agreement in the contra- in the course is like non-exclusive. Any either party can cancel at any time, right? Right. You might consider taking that out and saying, you know, I got thirty days. And but the problem with that is, if you can't find a tenant buyer in thirty days, that seller could be like, hey, I took it off the market. You know, I could have found somebody on my own. You can't just cancel it and walk away. So sometimes. What I recommend to people, and, and I've done this before, it's really powerful, is you partner with the seller. You know, I think Wendy Patton calls it uh, cooperative options, a cooperative mm-hmm. assignments or something like that, cooperative lease options. Some people call it cooperative assignments. And where that's where you, you cooperate with the seller and you do it together. In other words, you can come to the seller. And I know a guy who does this all the time from Australia. And he does this every single deal. He goes to the seller and says, you know, and I'm shortening this. Is like, hey, I'm going to make a lot of money on this deal. This is such a great deal. I'm going to make so much money and gets the seller to be like, oh, no, really? But he said, hey, listen, what if we partnered on this deal together? What if we split the profits? And he doesn't tell him how much. It doesn't have to be 50-50, but he he's offers to split the deal. He says, listen, what do, you know, I could use some help with this. I'm out of town or I'm an hour away. What if we split the deal? It could be, you know, 30, 70, you get 70, they get 30, 40, 60, 50, 50, depending on the, you know, but I'm going to need your help getting some pictures, helping me coordinate the showing, you know, helping me when I send somebody to you, make sure you give them the, this application, you know, and you, and so getting them to help you with the signs and the pictures and the showing of the homes and things like that, then you have an agreement with them. And it's just something that you could write in the regular co- contracts that you have. And that could be something that would then they would be less likely then okay. to want to go around and cancel the deal because you're partnering with them on it. That makes sense. Yeah. Do you recommend just like the right model? Like how how do most of the successful people do they actually put the fee down and then just you know plan in your numbers that you're going to hold it for about two months? Is that is that the norm? Yeah. You know, for me, I'll say, you know, let's say it's it's April 21 now, right? Mm-hmm. So I'll have it start on June 1. That's about four or five weeks. I know yeah. if I can't find a tenant buyer in three to four weeks, especially this time of the year, even with the COVID stuff, something's wrong. I'm either not marketing it right or it's overpriced. Right. And so nine times out of 10, if I've not found somebody, it's overpriced. Because even a property that's ugly and in the bad part of town will sell at the right price or will find a tenant buyer. So Okay. Just that one was probably a bad one because I didn't realize it needed that much work when I put it under contract, that one that went nightmare. And that's kind of, because of that whole thing happened to me, I kind of got cold feet. And that's why, you know, I was getting a lot of people interested, but when they walked through the property and needed this work and the person that went through, the realtor that went through and inspected it, just didn't tell me about all the issues. So if there's a property that needs a lot of work and the market rents in that area for a nice house or 1500 a month, if you advertise that thing for twelve hundred a month, you'll get flooded with calls. They won't. They understand why the rent right. is lower because it needs work, and you're giving them a small, or you're discounting the price to account for the repairs that are needed. Gavin, are you going to say something? Yeah, I was going to say communication. We touched on, but it's huge. Communication, even to the point that goes a long way, is that if you get someone interested that's not a qualified person, maybe they don't have the money. Right? Let's say. 
So they do, they're not qualified because they don't have money to put down. Do you need to be saying, hey, Mr. Seller, we had a couple, few people interested today. They're just not the right candidates. So I turned them away. What that's showing is, oh, so we've got interest number one, and this guy's actually trying to play someone decent in the property so that it gets them thinking like you're doing a good job. Because you are, but you're, you tendency not to tell them that. So they have no idea what's happening. Right. Before you know, you're not doing a thing. So you, the communication skills, and on this particular deal that went wrong, it sounds like you need it at a lower price based on the repairs. Yeah, and but I already locked into the agreement. Like I had to, I, I just messed up. On, that was just a whole big learning curve on that one. I just, yeah. I, I totally screwed that one up. Because I went yeah. with this guy that I paid an, a realtor inspection fee. And he didn't point any of these issues out. And I didn't know it until... And then I messed up. I put a lockbox on, but I let people into the property. And, but I, I'm going to use a realtor and let the realtor handle that going forward. Yeah. yeah. So awesome. you live and learn on that one. But I was just curious on the sending the offers out. Like, how do you the best way of getting them commit so they don't back out? Well, that's. I mean, you're pretty much doing it. Other than setting the expectation, right, cool. and then also communication. I mean, if they get cold feet, then that's going to happen. Yep. Right. So on that particular one, the only other thing that you could do is if you know it's a good deal, and I would only tell any of our one-to-one -one clients this, if they have experience and want to take it down, like that one sounds like if you're in a one, two, is it 70 and you can sell at 330 and you've yeah, got it's a five, it's a, I know, five it's 600 cash flow. I mean, it sounds like you can't lose. I know. But that would have been budget. like, oh, where do I start? Can I, I'll make my first payment in 45 days yeah. myself. Because yep. you know you're going to rent it, period, if you hold it. So that one would have sounded like a no-brainer. You could have just taken that. Yeah, I should have done that one. It's a five-bedroom. It's a big house, and it's in a great area. And I should have just taken that one yeah. immediately before she backed out. But I, she, she's, I think I could probably get her back. I'm still kind of in the, the loop it's with her. Oh, yeah, I, 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 get, I have a great, great uh, relationship with that seller. So yeah, yeah. So I'll, I'll just give her time and back off a little bit, you know? Yeah. All right, gentlemen, you guys have great material. Thank you so much. And, uh, you know, love it, guys. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate Take care. All right. That's awesome. Yeah, that was nice. And I promise we have not asked people to be on here to say that. Listen, um, this is a good time to end it, I think. Yeah. Darren is asking a question. Do you, did you record the agreement to cloud the title? So, Darren, we don't cloud the title unless it's a sandwich lease option and we're committing to that deal and so it sounded to me like he was just doing an assignment so he's not committing to anything okay good we're getting a lot of compliments nice guys hope you appreciated this listen if you're interested in getting some help and working with me and gavin and actually um working closely with us getting more one-on-one -on -one calls like this or getting more role plays and stuff like that. I want to go, I want to encourage you all to go to reinetwork.com slash coaching. 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 Reinetwork.com slash coaching. And I'm going to type that into the Zoom chat. If you're on, if you're watching this on Facebook or YouTube, if you could just please type that in the comments for us, we'd appreciate it. Reinetwork.com slash coaching. I think you can also go to coachjoe.net coachjoe.net and that redirects you to the same thing i just put both of those links in there and um check that out you know we have this thing where we either you come to savannah in person or we'll meet you virtually we'll set up your stuff get you the vas get you the marketing kind of wind you up give you our business in a box and wind it up and start getting the marketing and the systems going so you start getting leads immediately we have weekly calls with our students. We also have weekly calls for the VAs with our main VA. So our main VA who does REI Simple and all of our systems and technology and stuff, he leads a coaching call for your VAs if you're one of our clients. So it's a lot of fun. Not a lot of fun exactly as much as it is. You're going to get a lot more leads. You're going to close a lot more deals. You're going to make a lot more money. So if you want some coaching and one-on-one -on -one help, Go to reinetwork.com slash coaching or coachjoe.net and fill out an application. We'll get on the phone and see if we're a good fit. Um, as always, Gavin, it's been fun. It's been really good. Thank you so much. No, I appreciate it, Joe. I think it was great. And um, guys, thanks for coming on, con coming on with us. I appreciate it. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.